Welcome to Strip Cover Lit, I'm Adrian Ford. And I'm Dalton Gentry. And we're here with something that gets me pissy. Adrian reads Harry Potter. This is the last two chapters of Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. You yeah. finished another. We, 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 we're, we're, we're nearing death. Four years down. Yeah. Are you proud of it? Proud of myself or proud of it? Both. I am proud of myself for getting this far without strangling you, <laughs> but um, I, I still don't, I don't like it. Okay. I just don't. Okay. Uh, well, a brief rundown here of the chapters, if you are reading along. Uh, chapter 36, The Parting of Ways, Harry recalls the experience uh, with Voldemort to Dumbledore. We learn of Priori Incantatum, which is when uh, two wands meet. The, the spells don't work exactly. They begin to conjure old spells. Remember, yeah, that's how we had all the people come back to life, uh, which was actually the title of the previous chapter. You think you would establish what that was before you name a chapter about it, but whatever. I'm not an editor. Uh, and finally, Fudge allows Barty Crouch Jr. to be taken by the Dementors. Uh, so Barty Crouch is dead, essentially, uh, and it was Fudge's fault. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, then we get chapter 37, the beginning, where we wrap up the novel in true Harry Potter fashion. He's going back to the Dursleys, but he'll be back at Hogwarts next year. And Crouch would have gotten away with it, too, if it weren't for those damn kids. Those damn kids. We also find out, though, that Rita Skeeter, how she got the scoop, she was literally a bug. Yeah. So, that was clever. Yeah. That I was clever. I, it was, it was, I was expecting it to be her pen and pad were hidden somewhere. Okay. Because she didn't write, remember? Yes, the quick quills. Yeah. Uh, but no, it was a clever little uh, tongue-in-cheek joke, really. Yeah. She's a bug. <laughs> anyway, Adrian, how do you feel? Um, here's the only thing that really stuck out from these two chapters to me. We, I don't remember Mrs. Fig's first name, or if it was ever told to us, but Dumbledore lists a fig in when he's in the Round the Troops uh, speech, okay. right? Round the Troops and include Fig. Is that the same Mrs. Fig? I don't think so. You don't think so? It might be. Uh, I, what do you I mean it might be? Don't it, you know these stories? You are the... No, you pick out a character who literally has nothing to do with the series. Just okay. a name that's thrown out there and you're like, well, clearly this whole series is all about this person. When did I say that? And clearly uh, you should know everything about this, this name that was mentioned. Even though earlier today when we're reading Russian names, I make one up and you're like, those aren't even close to the same yeah. letters. <laughs> like you saw how the I named brothers characters. The Brothers Kurzatarov. What was it? I said like the Kurzatarov. Brothers. That is the Brothers Karamininov. <laughs> Karinya. That's close enough. Yeah. Because nobody reads it anyway. <laughs> uh, anyway. Uh, I, I'm not sure about that, but that would be something interesting to look into. Because if it is the same Mrs. Fig, there is a bit more going on there. Which is good on J.K.'s behalf. Do you really not know, or are you lying to I me? really don't know. Okay. Uh, but that would be good on J.K.'s behalf, to be bringing things together So like I went that. on that whole spiel about Mrs. Fig. And I sat here and listened and smiled. And you didn't remember if that character came back? Nope. Don't remember or I don't know? Don't remember. Okay. I genuinely think I said I'm not sure if this character has. Well, yeah, but I thought you were doing that just because. Oh, uh, because you know. I'm trying to lead you astray. Yes. Uh, no, when I do that, I get roasted on the internet because they're like, "How can you not remember this person?" I'm like, "I'm trying to play it cool, man." <laughs> Jesus. The cops are here playing it cool. Don't fool around Christ. with me. I mean, don't fool around with me. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, priori. <laughs> Priori incantatum. Yes. Uh, do we see any issues with that setting up the future? The wands literally uh, will not battle each other, if you will. Right. So, what we have been getting set up this whole time that Harry's going to have to take on um, Moldy Voldy is that he won't be able to, right? That's what uh, that, that is uh, saying so far. Or does it mean that they will not be able to duel? Because didn't he, didn't he put the hex on Harry, the Crucio, Crucio, Cruciatus? Cruciatus? Yes. Uh, the wands are still capable. Okay. But, uh, like when Harry went to deflect one of his spells, they met. And okay. they had the uh, golden shower explosion, which right. we talked about last time. A big penis joke. But... You made the big penis it joke. It was a big penis joke. It wasn't a small penis joke. It was a big penis joke. It was probably it was an average penis joke. Hey, I've been channeling Donald Trump all day. I'm so sorry about that. So sorry. Penis is fantastic. Anyway. You'll love it. Anyway. Um, 
so in in the event that the two wands like spells meet, where normal would just be a quick deflection move on, there is a big explosion where spells are recalled from the wands. Uh, things go a little wonky, and that's because the wands come from the same bird. They're both a phoenix feather wand from Fox the Phoenix, who's a character we've been introduced to before. You should know about. So little different there. Kind of throws a monkey wrench into the system of what's going to be happening. Right. Uh, I think you will be interested to see how it actually works out. Uh, but we will get there when we get there. So. Okay. Uh, anything? What, what do you want to talk about with this? You said you had two things. So what was the second? When did I say that? When you were saying something about fig. You said you had two things you wanted to talk about with this. No, I, that, that was the only thing that, that stood out to me. I don't think I said two things. You okay. Can, <coughs> maybe I did, but if I did, I misspoke. Um, but yeah, th- this was fairly standard for an ending to a Harry Potter novel, right? Because yeah. the only lasting consequence of the novel happened earlier in the novel, where mm-hmm. Voldemort comes back. They were both wrap-ups. Yes. yes. Um, so that's one thing that I had not noticed necessarily in this series before, is that anything... You'll have a new character introduced. Okay. New character won't come back. Okay. Uh, new character might or might not be the bad guy. Uh, the bad guy will be wrapped up at the end, but something, some lasting consequence endures the book. Okay. Um, in this, it's that Voldemort is back. Okay. Now, we do get the scene where Fudge basically uh, turns the Dementors on Barty Crouch. He brings them into the castle against Dumbledore's orders. They immediately swarm Crouch, take him out. Yeah. Uh, that, this one thing I had problems with in this novel was uh, Fudge, Crouch, and... Barty and Crouch Jr. Barty Crouch Jr. and uh, Badman, Pac-Man. Bagman. Bagman. Um, There's a lot. Keeping those characters uh, separate yes. was difficult for me. Okay. Because when I read them, they were all just uh, tall white guys in suits. Pretty much. Right? They work for the Ministry. Now, Fudge is the, I, I believe, Minister of Magic. At this oh, point. hold on. Now that, I've, now that I've gone into the recesses of my mind for this to complain about things, something else came up. And I don't remember if it was in these chapters or something before. Okay, let's talk about it. <clears throat> Somebody was mentioned as just a short man. Okay. Which is another one of J.K. Rowling's biases. Okay. She hates fat people, and short men aren't real men. And this upsets you. Well, it's just, like, if, if I said, if I wrote a book for children, okay. and I said real women have great big hooters. Okay. That's where real woman is. And this is just a woman without great big hooters. Okay. So she's a bad guy. Right? It, it is something that is assigned to someone... Based on a sexual preference that then demonizes them. Okay. Right? Very interesting. Um, <clears throat> men are, what are, what's a real man? A real man's supposed to be tall, and he's supposed to be uh, not skinny, but definitely not fat. Okay. Right? These aren't real men. Um, he's just short. He's just a short guy. Fuck him. Right? He's a bad guy. Fuck him. Right? Not real. Not a real person. We can kill bad guys. Okay. We can kill the short guys. We can kill the fat people. Right? I, I just tell me I'm wrong. I, are there well, good people that are short people? Uh, are there... Well, look at Dobby. You don't get shorter than Dobby's Dobby. Dobby's not a person. Dobby, Dobby, we are not giving any indication that Dobby is short for a house elf. Uh, look at uh, Professor Flitwick. Flitwick is like gnome size person. He's itty bitty tiny person. But then he's a gnome, isn't he? Okay. But I, I'm just... It, I don't think it is ever established that tall is good, uh, short is bad. Wormtail's bad, right? Yes. Wormtail's short. He was the shortest one of the group. Okay. Um, who was it that was mentioned? I think it was uh, uh, Barty Crouch Jr. Okay. Was being tortured, but he was just he's just a small guy. Okay. Right? Uh, and there's something else. There's some other reference in one of these chapters, uh, which the true irony of that is, uh, who's Daniel Radcliffe? Mm-hmm. Daniel Radcliffe's like five foot four, isn't he? I, I don't judge actors' heights because I'm always confused when I see them in real life. Danny DeVito, is he's tall. like five feet, if but that. I, but, but Daniel Radcliffe's like five four, I think. Yeah, not very tall. Yeah. So this is a grown man in your world, J.K. Rowling, that is only five foot four and he plays the good guy, right? So it's just one of those things. It's one of those things that look. Uh, 
if this were if this were that example of real women have hooters, right? I'd be pissed off. Okay. Right? If this were real women have blonde hair, I'd be pissed off. You're so allowed to be pissed you can off be pissed for these off tropes for being too. Short. And being 5'4", one day you may be the good guy, right? I'm not 5'4". I just wanted to get that out there. I knew it was coming. I was waiting. There was an opportunity and I had to take it. 5'5", five, five, something like that. These hands were made for slapping. <laughs> we should write a song. <laughs> That's got a ring to it. I don't know why. <laughs> anyway. Uh, but we do see Fudge give the Dementors crouch. No, 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 no. Was it Fudge? Yes. Yeah. Fudge was furious when he was talking to Dumbledore. Okay. And then he's, she said he was just an angry little man. Something like that. Okay. Just an angry little man. Angry little man. That's and very he was mean. so short. Yes. Um, anyway. That's what it was. That's why it sparked it just Okay. Uh, the Dementors take crouch. And Fudge basically lets it happen. Yes. Uh, this is our first real big inkling. And Fudge is refusing to admit that Voldemort could be back. Uh, he is chastising Dumbledore. Dumbledore is going against the Ministry's will by letting the kids know that this is happening. This right. is setting up our next novel of government corruption. Okay. So I, I think you're going to enjoy that. There's going to be a lot of things going on with that. You are going to get a villain who is not Scooby-Doo. So there is a separate villain in the next... Uh... Harry Potter besides Voldemort. From this point forward, Voldemort is the villain. He's the but big you're going bad. to get villainous characters. Now. You have you have sub bosses. Is yes, that what you're telling a me? sub boss. That's a good <clears throat> quote. A good way to put it. Uh, but the <laughs> sub boss is very clearly the sub boss at this point uh, in the next novel. So I, I think you, you're going to enjoy that. You're going to play with it. Uh, uh, this character is going to drive you, in my opinion. Drive me? How do you mean that? Um, I think the character is going to piss you off. Okay. And it may piss you off in a good way because it is a well done character. Is the character. Okay, so I won't ask if the character pulls a big flip like this one does, but is the character introduced as a bad guy? Yes and no. Yes, okay, so it's you can't tell me the character's name without giving things away. I don't see any reason that it would give anything away. Okay, so. Without giving it away, is there anything to the character's name that you find interesting? Like, will I find something to play with in the character's name? In the name, not yeah. that I know of. Okay. Well. Uh, now, I mean, I can tell you that because here's the thing: when the character is introduced, uh, it is very clearly an invasion of the magical school of Hogwarts. Uh, and as a reader, you immediately know this is trouble. This is a troubling character. This is an issue, uh, and it's made very clear, very quick. Okay. Uh, an authoritarian dictator type figure. Uh, character's name will be Dolores Umbridge. Okay. So, we'll see where we go from Dolores. there. Dolores. Dolores on the dotted line. Yeah. So, hope okay. you're ready for that one. I'll be ready. Okay. Uh, anything else we want to talk about? Uh, I, you know, I didn't take a lot of notes on okay. this. I was hoping that you would... Uh, I was hoping you would give some um, scope of what the conclusion of this book means in the Harry Potter universe. Right? <sighs> Um, why was this book important? And that's always the issue with the last few chapters. This is an important book in the last handful of chapters because you do get Voldemort. He is brought back to life. At this point forward, the threat is real. Right. Uh, the threat is no longer imaginary. Harry is not the boy who survived. He's the boy who must survive uh, because Voldemort is back. And he is after Harry. Okay. Uh, so that, that's a, a major part of this novel. Uh, Sirius is becoming more and more involved in Harry's life. Uh, Dumbledore seems to have accepted the fact that he is not a criminal. He's welcomed him into it. So that that's a big yeah. thing for Harry. Snape does not yet. Hmm? Snape does not welcome him. No, that. Snape does not welcome him at this point. Yeah. Uh, there is the gentleman shake hands moment. Yeah, that was strange to yes. me. Yes. So. Is there something binding about a handshake in the magic world? Uh, it, in that form of handshake? No. Okay. Is a handshake later used as, like, the quintessential binding? Yes. So here's what I wonder. Who was Dumbledore afraid of in that situation? Snape, seem, Snape seemed pissed off. But it seems um, Sirius is the one who 
urges action against Snape, isn't he? Okay. He's the one that, that seems to want to take action against that individual. Snape has always been of the uh, of the mindset of get him out, get him away, but don't Snape, let him here. In this scene again, defends <clears throat> Dumbledore when Crouch is saying, you know, Voldemort clearly can't be back. Snape says, hey, as a former Death Eater, yeah. baby, no, he back. Yeah. So we do get that element now. Yeah. So uh, interesting. Well, we knew he was a former Death Eater, right? We knew, but now he is willingly flaunting that. And that's uh, one of the things... Uh, we were both uh, education majors at one point. Yeah. Uh, your teacher in high school does not have tattoos. Right. Period. If they do, you don't see them. Right. So, even at that simple level, that's a big deal for Snape. Uh, he's putting his career on the line doing this. Well, the thing that speaks to me is this is a clear sign that Snape is willing to admit very clearly, very openly, and very enthusiastically, yes, we are at war. Okay. Right? Because what this is, when I show you this, is that you know where I've been. Okay. You know what I've been through. Um, you know what side I'm on now. And the fact that everyone knows I have this means we have to publicly, we have to get rid of Voldemort, right? Okay. Uh, because if Voldemort sticks around, there will be suspicions about me. Okay. So it is a very clear indicator that Snape knows the magic world is at war now. And I think... There, there is not the possibility for living alongside. Okay. And I, I think that is a good way to put things as into, how is this the M M an impact novel uh, in the series of seven? Uh, is at this point, we're at war. Uh, okay. That is what's begun. In the next book, uh, we are going to be dealing with the politics of war. Uh, we are going to be dealing with loss on a level that we haven't dealt with before. Uh, Cedric sets the pace. <laughs> Every character is now cannon fodder. Uh, she's going to go George R.R. R. Martin by the end of this and just kill half the cast. In book five? Uh, no, book seven. We're going to oh, kill book, a lot okay. of them. But we are going to start dealing with loss and major loss and how characters deal with loss of other characters. Okay. Uh, a very good stuff going on Who's here. the one friend whose parents are in the psych ward? Neville. Neville. Is it Neville's parents that die? We're going to find out more about Neville. Okay. Uh, we're going to start dealing with the idea of prophecy uh, and how that mythos is handled in the wizarding world. Now I have to plug this because uh, every now and then you see little things on the internet that are like, oh, look at this little snippet here because somebody saw something in like the movie and they just ran with it. So i got to bring it up to you here. Uh, in book one, when Harry's first introduced to the Wizarding World, there's a wizard who is stirring his coffee, like making it stir with his finger, so he's using magic without a wand, which no one can do. But he's reading Stephen Hawking's A Brief History of Time. So the whole cult theory behind that is, how does science impact the Wizarding World? Because if you can use magic, what good is science? Okay, Dalton, that was very clearly not in book one. Not in book one, in film one. Okay. So I just wanted to bring it up here. Verse. I just wanted to bring it up to you. Which is the whole reason that J.K. Rowling has a career. I hate you so much. Okay, Rita Skeeter. Literally a bug in the end, correct? Yes. I think that's clever and that's good play on her behalf. Um, I thought that that was extremely... Um, we've had this conversation before on the, on the channel. These types of people who think that something like violence or... I, I mean, that is, that's kidnapping. Yes. Right? That is one of the heaviest forms of abuse. Yes. She's but it's okay as long as the good guy doing it, right? Yeah, we, yeah. We, we like we her mind. put her in a jar. We like her mind. We're going to teach her a lesson. And it's strange how, how quickly that is backed up against um, Moody okay. being kidnapped. Right? Okay. Kidnapped and basically kept in a jar. Very interesting. And then Hermione's kidnapped Rita Skeeter and she keeps her in a jar. And it's cool, man. Look, okay. at what the, look at what these magic folk can do, man. Okay. And it's cute and it's cool because they're the good guys, man. Right? Or uh, how Moody, uh, the Malfoy kid, bounced him around and turned him into a rat or whatever. Fair. That? We're so against violence towards people. <laughs> but he's a good guy, man. Yeah, he can do it. Look at, him, look at him bouncing around like a rat, man. So it's just, it, it's just, it's that double, that double edge from the same wielder, right? Okay. Now, there is the, and this has always been something that's kind of bothered me in the series, there are the unforgivable curses, correct? Yes. Um, someone is shooting at you, right? Yes. Do you try to block the bullets or do you shoot back? What do you mean? 
you are in a gunfight. Yes. In a war. Okay. Is it more beneficial to you to shoot back? You shoot to kill. Or just, well, I'm going to stay in the foxhole and maybe he'll get tired eventually. Right. Why aren't the good guys in Harry Potter comfortable with using Abada Kedavra? Why are we? Why are they unforgivable? This man's literally trying to kill me with this spell. Right. Why am I just trying to disarm him? Well, but I, I think that you go back to the same... I don't know. I think you go back to the same principle as... Um, why do we handicap police officers in this country to such an extent at times? Okay. Right? Um, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of violence in the wrong direction in all of these situations. But... Um, the the use of lethal force sometimes cannot be questioned. But as long as we consider the cops the good guys, we have to question them. Okay. Right? Uh, and that is true. There, If we're going to go with like a law enforcement perspective with this, uh, there is a rigorous, rigorous process if lethal force is used. If any force is used in anything. Uh, but if we're looking at justification, if someone is shooting at you, and you are armed, you shoot back. Yeah. yeah. Because you're protecting yourself and others at that point. Yeah. And you don't disarm. You shoot to kill. Yeah. So, I, I, it is an interesting thing. And maybe it's a young adult novel. We don't yeah, want to I have think, the bad guys killing people. I think that is a trope people. of the children's novel. Uh, but, come on. Yeah. Um, think back to... Uh, it, it, can I bring up a different movie universe? You may. The Marvel Cinematic Universe. Okay. When Iron Man 1 dropped, do you remember that? Okay. Did you see Iron Man 1 in the theaters? Yes, I, I didn't see it in the theaters. Okay. Did you see it close to when it came out? Yes. Before that, most of the superhero movies you had seen were Batman, right? Yeah. Batman ain't killing nobody, right? Correct. Iron Man slays some dudes, right? How did that feel the first time you see it? I did feel gritty and it, it did it feel takes you, disorienting. You're taking it back. Okay. Right? All right. Um, so, I, yeah, I, I think that, that that is a trope of... Young adult and children's literature. The, okay. the good guy is above killing. All right. So as we have said many times before, we have finished Harry Potter for the year of 2016. Now we will be back with a full wrap-up video talking uh, Goblet of Fire as a whole, but you will not get the Order of the Phoenix until right. 2017. Right. Uh, in, in, in this next wrap-up video, I think we're going to take a larger scope look at the Harry Potter universe through four books. Okay. Uh, well, that's always good to do. Yeah. It is good to look at the large picture as yeah. well. So if you would like to follow us on that journey, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below and give this video a like as well. Uh, we always like to talk about Harry Potter and try to break it for you, so we hope you enjoy that as well. Make sure you follow us on Twitter at Strip Cover and on Facebook at Strip Cover Lit. And now I know.